Linda Graham. Linda is a dear friend of mine. She has the heart of gold. She loves humanity to the goal. Linda loves to meditate. I love talking to her. She provides so much wisdom that is occurring in her life. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Yet, this is sugar to my soul. My teeth don't decay, but my soul gets fulfilled. I have known her for many moons. This isn't the first go around. We have known each other for eternity. Both of us are walking on the same path, yet the path is different for all. We inspire each other to be kind and compassionate. The world can only change through kindness and compassion. At times, the world sees only through black and white. For many moons, this has been the way. We talk about seeing in color. Meditation changes the way of seeing through the black and white of life. Meditation brings the colors of kindness and compassion to the forefront in life. In each and every moment, we have free choice to see the true colors of life. You are the universe. You just don't know it. These are only, there are only a few people who I can talk about such matters. Linda is one of them. We're all on the same wavelength in life. We know the greatest riches lie within. When you are rich in heart, you do not hoard your riches. When you are rich in life, you freely give away kindness and compassion to all, even to your so-called enemies, which in reality doesn't exist only in your state of mind. You see, a wise person knows the well is eternal. Linda is always learning and practicing to go to the next level in the video game of life. Life will throw us curveballs. We can react as leaves blown in the wind and get upset. Or one can see this as a golden opportunity to just smile. By doing this, one goes to the next level in the video game. There are infinite levels in the video game. Only kindness and compassion will take you to another level. Linda helps me to learn about playing this video game of life with more awareness. We are all in the same boat together. We all have free choice and free will. I love the universe provides me with such wonderful people to help me on this incredible journey of life. Thank you, Linda, for who you are. I love you. Don Rocklin. I first met Don in Sedona in 1986. At that time, Don was Linda Graham's boyfriend. Don is an incredible musician. He's on the same spiritual path as I am on. Fast forward 20 years. I'm living in Ashland, Oregon. Don is living in Ashland, Oregon. I have a ton of poems that I've created during the last 20 years. I went to a poetry conference in Orlando, Florida. Ray Manzarek from the famous music group The Doors was given a poetry reading. This was not a normal reading. <coughs> he provided music to the reading. I was blown away. I never heard music and poetry together like this. Anyway, I approached Don and asked him what he wanted to do with the music for my first CD. Don said yes, and the rest is history. Don is a great improviser. When I did a poem about the blind man touching the elephant, he created a slow, sonting effect of an elephant walking slowly. For each track, he created something unique. 
Listen to the Fletcher Soul Traveler Collection Project, 2017. Scroll down to the bottom where I have a collection of Don's collaboration. This is from Don's, Don's website. Don Rockliffe is a composer, pianist, and an educator. Born in Los Angeles, California, he grew up pursuing music first playing French horn on his way to a Juilliard scholarship where he decided that reading other people's music wasn't how he wanted to spend his time. At that point, he switched to guitar and then taught himself piano as he started composing his own music. Several years later, while practicing on a church piano, the church minister offered him a playing gig. That started Don's performing career. Never having formal piano lessons, he was encouraged and inspired by the response of his first audiences. He started booking himself at other churches, later adding on restaurants, weddings, and all types of special events. His composition started catching on, and soon he produced his first solo CD. He composed and toured with an intimate flight dancing company from Flagstaff, Arizona. Soon thereafter, thereafter he was commissioned by a New York playwright to compose <coughs> for an off Broadway show. Several years later, he landed writing and performance gigs with the 4th Street Kids Dance Troupe, Tucson, Arizona, Path for Performing Arts Theater of the Handicapped in Medford, Oregon and the Children's Dance Theater of Ashland, Oregon. To support his music in the mid-80s, Don worked at a variety of sales jobs, was sales manager for an office supply company, a recruiter for a technical search firm, and landed a job as vice president of the Juris Corporation, a financial and legal service company where he worked for two years, until relocating to Sedona, Arizona. Discovering that his work options were limited with the help of a partner, he created the Sandwich, Sandwich Man Lunch Delivery Service. Click here. We had a great two-year run, Don said. Eventually, the music picked up. After moving south to Tucson while working part-time in the marketing department for the Tucson Symphony, he began giving three-hour piano workshops at colleges and universities. Within six months, his just-for-fun piano workshops became a thriving, full-time business that took him to over 65 cities across the United States. His teaching methods and philosophy of playing music for the heart rather than by reading notes helped free thousands of students from their fear of making mistakes and holding themselves hostage to perfectionism and performance anxiety. After relocating to Ashland, Oregon, Don founded the Ashland School of Music, which in addition to offering group classes for adults and children, several served as a venue for local artists to perform. Don started to realize that the impact he had on the students' lives as a teacher was as rewarding as performing and writing music. This realization inspired him to create other types of seminars, including Crisis to Creativity, Wellness with Music, and Fearless Public Speaking. His book, Fearless Public Speaking, helps people overcome their perfectionism and performing anxiety so they can be comfortable speaking in front of a crowd. Whether teaching creativity, public speaking, or piano, his common message of inspiration is to relax into your life, be prepared to improvise, enjoy the ride, and use the rules as guidelines, not boundaries. Spirituality is the basics of Don's teaching and coaching. He has always been curious about the spiritual nature of life and for himself, has discovered that his spiritual path is about following his creative impulses and hopefully inspiring a few people along the way.
David Gelfin. David was instrumental in producing my first CD, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. I first met David in Los Angeles in the 80s. David is a type of friend that will never have spent years not seeing him. When we do, there is a great connection. We are all on the same wavelength. David has always inspired me. He has always grown deeper and discovered his true nature, which manifests in kindness, love, and compassion. The world needs more people like David. This picture of David reminds me of his true nature. He stands in the background and simply smiles. As you can see, the picture is slightly blurred. David just blends into nature. He has nothing to prove. David works at the Oregon Tiger Sanctuary. <coughs> the Oregon Tiger Sanctuary, OTS, is dedicated to rescuing, rehabilitating, and providing sanctuary to retired, abandoned, abused, and neglected animals. OTS provides a permanent and loving home to many species. Species including tigers, lions, leopards, cougars, a wide variety of primates, reptiles, and numerous dogs, cats, and farm animals. OTS is also dedicated to stopping the flow of animals <coughs> needing sanctuary by educating the human species about their plight and supporting stronger laws to protect them. Mary Beth Jackson. Love it. I must admit, I don't know Mary Beth very well. We didn't hang out together. Yet, she had a heart of gold. One of my favorite moments was on top of a mountain. A snowstorm was taking place. Inside of the temple, you could hear huge typo drums reverberating into the night. It was a sight to behold. Prayers were sent out to around the world. Meditation was thick in the air. Ella was on earth. Afterwards, sweet fellowship occurred. I remember Mary Beth making and serving chai. It was absolutely delicious. Now, I love chai. And this was like liquid gold droplets of love. At times, Mary Beth told me her precious stories on her journey of life. I learned all about Uncle Bob. He seemed like quite a character. Mary Beth loved her uncle. To be honest, I didn't see a broken bone in her body. She loved to meditate. You could see it in her eyes. She cared for humanity. Mary Beth didn't boast about her experiences. She just shined like the sun. She had nothing to prove. I haven't seen Mary Lou for probably a good 10 years. I learned of her passing a few days ago. Memories never die. Yes, the physical dies, but the soul lives forever. I believe we are all shooting stars. When we leave this body, we become stardust. Mary Lou is just inside of us. I can see, still see, her smiling face dancing into the night. Life is precious. Someday, Mary Lou will appear on the scene. She will just have a different body. For now, she is dancing with her master. The Foundation for Meditative Studies, Part 1 Ishwara Devi I have known Ishwara for over 30 years. 
I love her Facebook posts. They contain many useful nuggets on this journey in life. I love reading the many spiritual adventures that people have written down. Ishwara has her eyes focused within. Anne Freeman and her, and her husband Marcus are a delight to be around. <coughs> I first met Anne around 30 years ago. She comes from Australia. I always remember the times we drew up the mountains with them. At times it would be snowy and we would reach our destination with a temple in the sky. Suzanne Marie. Suzanne loves tea. From my recollection, recollections, she loves the Japanese tea ceremonies. Some days, someday, I would love to attend her tea making ceremonies. As you can see in the picture, her head is pointing towards the sky. I like that. Molly Needleman. I love the Needlemans. Molly has been working at the Oregon Tiger Sanctuary for many years. It has always been a pleasure, pleasure talking to her. She has an upbeat aura around her that makes her to be a pleasure to be around. Alice Bomber. I love the sparkle from Alice's eyes. The light within is streaming through. All these people love to meditate. Many organizations that meditate at times don't like to. Alice loves what she does. She fills her inward cup every day. John Taylor. My wife and I would often drive John and his wife up the mountain. We'd always have a great time. John loves the Apple products and photography. I love to see his post on Facebook. He is extremely creative. Leanne Kilburn. I love Leanne and her husband Ron. Leanne is from Australia. She knew I was a surfer and asked me if I knew about this one famous surfer. I sure did. She told me a story how both parents tried to get them set up to get married. Leanne imported incredible silk shirts from Vietnam. I still wear them today. This poet photo is her grandkids. Penny Rue Tor Spindler. For many people, they think that channeling was a fake. Well, I met and talked to Ma Fu many times. We had a relationship that was deep. Like any relationship, you knew one another. Yet there were numerous times I saw Penny who channels Ma Fu and said hello. She had no idea who I was. In fact, I spoke to her once when she was reading off the list of attendants for a seminar and said hi to each one. One time I saw her and Ron, Ron Spindler was with her. I said hi and I was walking away. She whispered to Ron, who's that? Rob said, that's Richard Fletcher. That really gave me a sign that I have a relationship with Ma Fu. How can you have a relationship with someone when you never interacted with? So it makes perfect sense for Penny to say that. We have never interacted before. Premananda. Prem has a special heart. She is very kind. Recently we attended an event up on the mountain. We lived in Kansas and haven't, haven't been to the ashram in 10 years. Prem said a very kind words to my wife. She said, both of you bring something special when you come up here. You can't quite pinpoint it. Thanks Prem for such kind words. Julia Robertson. One day I was talking to Julia and she knew I was a surfer. She mentioned that there was a period in her life when she and her husband would go to the ranch. She asked me if I ever went there. Well, we had a wonderful conversation. We are on the same wavelength. Jillia is a delight to be around. She has been involved in the film, film industry for many years. I always look forward to hearing her stories. Darlene Wan. Darlene is another person who is extremely kind to my wife and I. 
Whenever we would see her, she would always give us a big hug and ask us how we were. Like the entire group, she loves to meditate. No wonder she is so kind. Christine Seeger. I'll be honest, I don't know Christine very well, yet I'm impressed what I see. She is devoted to her son and loves light. What more can you ask for? Life is an adventure, and Christine loves life. Justin Murphy. Justin was part of the small mince group which I belong to. Justin loves his dogs. That's why you don't see a picture of him. You see his beloved dog. Justin is an incredible person to be around. Life has thrown him a few curveballs, yet every time he has managed to get on base. I love to read his post on Facebook. He never gives up. Love you, Justin. Sophia Sharp. This is a story where Mafu told me to have lunch with Sophia. Mafu, do you love your mouth? Richard, yes. Mafu, do you know why you do? Richard, because I love myself. Mafu, do you know why it's so familiar to you? Richard, no. Mafu, are you prefer prepared for an evenness? Richard, yes. Mafu, it will cause controversy inside of you. Well, here it goes. Laughter from audience. You have not been on this planet, regardless what limited entities have given unto you in your fantasy, and therefore they have responded for 34,000 years. That is the truth, and this mouth directly comes from you. The whole of your celery memory, you have been unlimited God for 34,000 years. You are like unto a woman of the day of yester, and unto Sophia entity. Counsel with her and take your nutrition with her on this day. Have lunch. It will be a great saving grace for you. You brought it here because you loved him. This is the cellular memory of 34,000 years ago. This is why the penis functions different than others. That is why the heart is different, the breath, because it doesn't understand how the 20th century works at all. Great entity. We shall do much together, you and me. So be it. Pointing to Sophia, you counsel with this man. He is a great companion of yours. Marcus Friedman. I have had many incredible adventures with Marcus throughout the years. He wrote the book Celestial, Celestial Rays about 30 years ago. This is one adventure I had with Marcus. One night in Sedona, I was, the, I was there with three of my friends. We were outside looking at the stars in lawn chairs. It was early July. It was a nice evening. The sky was perfectly clear. There were thousands of stars in the sky. We were looking at strange phenomena taking place. We would see these streaks of light going vertical in the sky. Imagine a huge flashlight sending a flash of light from left to right across the sky. It would come in one minute intervals. All of us were delighting in the show. We were making the same oohs and ahs when kids see fireworks. In the midst of a, no of a low, I noticed three stars in the sky I never noticed before. These three stars formed a triangle in the sky. It looked like a pyramid. All of a sudden, I felt myself being sucked out of my body. It was like this huge vacuum sucking me out in my body. There was this tunnel of light, and I was traveling inside of this tunnel. We have all seen on Star Wars, the next generation, the sensation of warp speed. This was the same kind of sensation that I felt. The next thing I knew, I saw this huge mothership. This ship was so large that there were mountains, oceans, and earth-like plants inside of this ship. I was greeted by a group of 12 beings. I recognized Zoran and Lord Michael. They took me on a tour of the ship. The whole ship had a clear plastic-like substance, which was the outer shell. Inside of this were the mountains. 
The main engine rooms were driven by energy itself. They had the technology to convert energy itself to drive the whole ship. All the electricity was generated by pure and perfect energy. There is no pollution whatsoever. It's hard to put in words what was going, what was going on and what I saw. It was so beautiful. These beings were so beautiful. They were friendly and extremely intelligent. Their technology was light years ahead of ours. At one point, I was placed on this beautiful table. Saran, Lord Michael, and the rest of these twelve beings placed their hands on my body and started to send me brilliant colors of light. My whole body was enveloped in a rainbow of light. This light was pure consciousness. It was alive, extremely blissful. I felt all the stress was taken out of my body. It was an incredible ceremony taking place. No words were spoken. Here were twelve incredible beings performing an ancient ceremony on me. I felt they were once again reminding me that we all come to the same source of life. There is a universal consortium of beings who are called the White Brotherhood whose mission is to transform this universe into something far beyond what we can imagine. There are millions of human beings alive on this planet who are part of this consortium. Before we were born, we all decided to come down and help this planet Earth. All the major religions now they have something incredible is about to happen on the, this planet and the beings on this wonderful Earth. We are to usher in this, ex, this era along with our friends. Our weapons are simply love itself. Love is the most powerful force in the, in the universe. Our mission is to constantly change ourselves to be in beings of love. Christ was a prime example of this. We all have the same cast capacity. We just have to stop, look, and listen to what's going on. Here, the most incredible event is taking place on this planet, and we are asleep. We are too involved in our little lives to stop for one second and ask some basic questions. Who am I? What is the purpose of this life? What is true happiness? I feel as a society we need to learn about tolerance, forgiveness, and being open-minded. Each of us is so caught up in our own mindset that we can't see that we are there are flowers, that we are flowers on a beautiful garland called life. Isn't it so beautiful that we are so different, yet all of us at the same time are so familiar? The breath of life is keeping us alive, and we are unconscious of this fact. It's time to wake up and smell the roses. Each one of us is having the experience to remind us to wake up either consciously or up subconsciously, even if we don't believe in any of this. Imagine if all this was make-believe. There, there was a time that flying an airplane was make-believe. It's now reality. There are millions of people on this planet whose prayers are to see peace on this planet. In time, this will happen. We just have to bring peace to ourselves. We have to know who we truly are. We are beings of love. We have simply forgotten who we are. It is now time as a whole that we wake up. It's kind of funny. The whole world wants peace and happiness. Yet there is so much misery and poverty and greed. The love we have inside is boundless and endless. It is worth more than all the riches in the whole universe. Without it, we are nothing. I know I had many incredible experiences in my life. Many people are envious of them, yet without love, they mean nothing. It's like a body without the breath, no life whatsoever. Our main mission is to be filled with love, and whenever it touches, it turns to love. What could, did the, what could would have happened to this planet if every citizen was experiencing such a love? We would truly have no conflict, war, or poverty on this planet. We would truly help each other out. We would truly know that humans are incredible beings. Well, I came back and my friends knew that something incredible had happened to me. I told them just a fraction what happened. 
It was so personal that I didn't want to blab out or be arrogant. Years later, I felt the time was right to put my experience in words. This incident showed me that my friend beyond the stars was always looking after me and this planet. I knew my days as a young child looking up to stars was based upon a, an unconscious yet conscious connection with my friends. We are never alone. We are friends who look after us. Most of the time, we don't know it. The Foundation for Meditative Studies, Part 2, Trisha White. Trisha always has that smile for life. She'd always be kind to my wife and I. You can tell by the smile in the picture. She loves to meditate. Meditation brings the sweetness from within to the outer world. Christine Edner. I first met Christine in Maui over 25 years ago. At that time, there was a study group where we would gather together and meditate. Fast forward 10 years, and we would be both living in Ashland, Oregon. Once again, the thread of love tying us together. I always enjoy my times being with Christine. She now lives in Arizona with her new husband. Tori Biles. Tori and I were in the same men's group. We also did Taco Tuesdays where we would get together and talk about life. I treasure the time I spent with him. He loves to learn about, <coughs> about life. He has a great understanding for the economic world. This is one of his passions. Great person to know. I admire him. Julie Chertile. Julie and I have been had some friends that cross borders. Many times people get stuck in having one set of friends. Julie crosses borders. One dear, of, one dear friend of hers is Laura Legere. The other I saw quite recently is Joan After. I first met Joan in India in 1971. It's always a delight talking to Julie. We catch up on things and celebrate life. I remember Julie makes an incredible drink using her lavender oil. Christiana Pearson. Christiana would always invite my family to her Christmas parties. We love to attend. She is always kind to our family. She lived our neighborhood. Much love goes out to her. Thanks for inviting us. Katherine. Kellenbach. Kathleen is another person who would invite us to our Christmas parties. We always enjoyed them. A few years back, we were visiting our daughter in Ashland, and she invited us to her Christmas party again. We had a delightful time catching up with our friends. Dan Altman. I first met Dan in Maui. We were both software engineers. Dan had a zest for life. Years later, I would meet him again in Ashland, Oregon. I would take walks with my wife and Dan would be drinking coffee. We would stop and chat for a while. The Foundation for Meditative Studies, Part 3. Lauren Nagaryu Rubin. Lauren was Barbara's and I, teacher for learning how to play the didgeridoo. I first heard the didgeridoo in Peter Weir's movie, The Last <coughs> Wave, in the late 70s. Something in it totally resonated to my soul. Lauren was a very patient and considerate teacher we had a lot of fun taking her classes. This was the first instrument I learned how to play. Marie, Maria Andre. Maria Andre was in charge of the kitchen at the ashram. She was an incredible cook. I spent many hours assisting her in the kitchen. 
There's a program called Fresh Start, where freshmen <coughs> from Ashland High School's high school comes together as a group before school starts. It's a great way for students to get to know their classmates before school starts. I will always cherish my time and friendships. Friendship with her. Josie Maltese. Josie lived in Maui. I will always cherish the times together with her. She does photographs for weddings in Maui. Mark Richard. Mark came to visit us while we lived in Maui. We had a great time. Mark is a great guy to be around. I remember Mark had a necklace given to him by Mafu that was donated to the sea. Mark has worked at the Tiger Sanctuary for many moons. Ron Hansen. Ron is married to Leah. He is an inspiration to be around. I love talking to him. He is quite diverse and in touch with the economics happenings around the world. Besides, he loves to meditate. Gary Dix. Gary is another unique individual. He has a different way of viewing politics than I do, yet we can still laugh and enjoy life together. I enjoy my times with Gary. He is a delight to be around. Karen is Gary's wife. Barbara and I had great times talking to her. She truly enjoys life to the fullest. Roland. Roland is from Canada. My wife and I love <coughs> to talk to him. There has been many times we have laughed together late in the night. I treasure Roland. He means a lot to me. Laura Kramer. Laura is another friend of Barbara's and I. Whenever we come to visit our daughter in Ashton, we try to look her up. She is a delight to be around. Florence Needleman Pepper. Rest in peace, Florence. I will always remember you, the time you invited Barbara and I over for dinner. You were such an incredible host. We had many wonderful times talking to you. We love your kids. Thanks for being who you are. Andrew Rubin. Rest in peace, Andrew. We will miss you. You were so friendly to my wife and I. We will never forget, forget you. A piece of you lies in our heart. Thomas Donnelly. Thomas is an incredible photographer. We met him through Christine Perini. I will always remember the Italian feast I put for the gang. That was a great time. Love those Facebook posts. I love hearing about your life. Mandy Wright Bartz. Do you know that people can truly change? Mandy is certainly a great example. Last year, my wife and I went to the ashram, first time in many years. We lived in Kansas. Mandy was welcoming all the people who were attending the event. She did it in such a loving and compassionate manner. To be honest, we were blown away. Sometimes huge transformations took, some huge transformation took place inside of her. I can't put it in words, yet I can see the transformation clear as day. Mandy is married to one of my best friends, Harry, who I've known for over 40 years. Meredith Chase. Meredith lived in the same neighborhood as we did in Ashland. I first met her in the mid-80s. I remember her telling me a story that she saw bald eagles at the lake near town. I was never fortunate to see them in Oregon. Meredy has a great smile and sense of humor. Josh Adley. Josh is Peter's son. I remember that we were talking one day. We were outside sitting on a bench. We were on a break. We had fun talking, and Peter then mentions that Jock, Josh was his son. I was blown away. I didn't know that. Hey Josh, have a great day. Love the picture. Peter Hadley. I met Peter many moons ago. I would love to take walks. Many times I would see Peter riding on his bicycle. Sometimes he would stop and we would chat for a while. I think Peter's from Australia. Of course, Peter loves to meditate. 
Terry Williams. Terry has a heart of gold. When my wife and I recently visited Oregon, she welcomed us with open arms. I love how Terry truly loves humanity. That is a precious gift. Keith Manning. Keith is Manning is, is married to Jane. Both of them, my wife and I truly love. I remember many beautiful conversations with them. I would love to see the harmony and love they have for each other. Linda Haxton. I have known Linda for many years. She was our real estate agent when we sold her house. I met her mom and dad once. I can see why Linda had these incredible traits. Bob Haxton. Bob and I go way back. I first met Bob in 1972. He was roommates with Buddy Owens and John Roberts. All of them loved to meditate. Fast forward 15 years. I was working for Shirley MacLaine. She needed a new logo. We went to this one person's house and lo and behold, it was Bob's father. Fast forward another 15 years. We moved to Ashland, Oregon. Guess who was living there? Bob Haxton. The thread of life is tying us all together. Bob is a great guy to be around. Mind you, he loves to meditate. The Foundation for Meditative Studies, <clears throat> Part 4. Lindy is another example of the thread of tying us all together. I have a friend named Silas. I first met him in 1975 in New Mexico. Years later, I moved to Ashland, Oregon. A friend of mine told me that Lindy and Silas went to the same ward off school together in Europe. I was trying to track Silas down. <clears throat> <coughs> Through Lindy, I was able to connect to Silas after 30 years of not seeing each other. I also visited East Africa, where she was born. Small world. <clears throat> Rob Spindler. I first met Rob in 1986 in Los Angeles. I always admired Rob. Of course, he loves to meditate. Whenever I see him, we have good times. Some people you have a deep connection with, and words can't describe it. Rob is one of those. Lynn Conwell. Lynn is one of those who oozes love from her being. I love to read her Facebook posts. They are always inspiring to me. She always has something positive to say <coughs> about her fellow human beings. I love it. Christine Perini. Christine is another person to be a, a great person to be around. I've had many wonderful occasions speaking to her. I will always remember the time I cooked an Italian feast for a dinner party at her house. Uh, Allison Richards. Once upon a time, <coughs> My wife and I were looking to buy a house in Allison's neighborhood. We dropped by her house. Usually in this day and age, you don't do such a thing. Yet Alan welcomed us with open arms. I remember eating freshly baked chocolate chip cookies. Thanks Alan, Allison for being <coughs> who you are. Sometimes the little thing in life shows greatness. Christine Nagato Nielsen. I love that Christine balances meditation with the martial arts. She has been studying Aikido and meditation for many years. I like that. Robert Nagato Nielsen. I love to read Robert's posts. They are very inspiring. Inspiring. At times, they contain Zen wisdom. At times, they, can, they contain wisdom from his Aikido lineage. Both Robert and his wife are delight to be around. Robert has been working at the Oregon Tiger Sanctuary for many years. Judith Ernst. 
Juno spent time in Kansas. I live in Kansas. My wife and I would love to be around her. She had such an incredible love around her. Of course, she loves to meditate. She is a fine example of one who does. Andrea Garfield My wife and I love and adore dragons. Andrea loves and adores dragons. We spend much of our time talking about dragons. Here's a link from my, for my love of dragons. I read this both in audio and written form. Andrea, thank you for the friendship. Both Barbara and I love you. Noreen Nicholson. My family loves Noreen. Even my daughter has Noreen as a Facebook friend. Whenever we come to visit our daughter, we try to connect with Noreen. She has a heart of gold. Krishna Gokul. I always remember driving Krishna and his lovely wife to, to the palace in the sky. I got to know his family and grandkids. They were delight to be around. I will always treasure the times. You invited us to your house for dinner. Of course, I love Indian food. That is my favorite. Christian Divine. Christian is another brother to me. He loves to meditate, practice martial arts, and yoga. <coughs> I like all three. Here he is feeding a tiger. He spent some time at the Oregon Tiger Sanctuary. I will always cherish my time with Christian. He was another person whose eyes sparkled. Mark Frazier. Well, Mark thinks outside of the box. There's a quote from Mark on Facebook. I am known for teaching astronomy at CNN, judo at Sandia, Sandia Judo Club, and the beautiful game of Go. I would also add, he loves to meditate. Linda Fox. Linda lived in our neighborhood. We would have 4th of July celebrations at our house. Linda and her daughter would come. Linda had a great heart. She was like, as accountant as I remember. She combined left and right brain thinking. Oh, and she loves to meditate. Jacqueline King. My wife and I love Jacqueline. She was always so interested in talking to us. You can tell by the picture that she enjoys life. What more can I say? Christine Briggs. I love this post from Christy. I stay out of politics, more or less here. Still truth is the truth, judge not. Our job here is to be happy, seek the kingdom of God inside ourselves, and be kind. For all this together, may this new year find you healthy, free, and happy. Jesus was a radical, non-violent revolutionary who hung around with lepers, hookers, and crooks, wasn't American and never spoke English, was an anti-wealth, anti-death penalty, anti-public prayer, but was never, but was never anti-gay, never mentioned abortion or birth control, never called the poor lazy, never justified torture, never fought for tax cuts for the wealthiest Nazarenes, never asked a leper for a copay, and was a long-haired, brown-skinned, homeless community organizing, anti-slut-shaming Middle Eastern Jew. Joanne Todaro. Joanne and I are both in the IT industry. In fact, she has been a telecommuter for a firm in New York City for many years. She loves to meditate. My wife and I love to talk to her. She is an inspiration to be around. Corey Kaminsky. Corey works at the Oregon Tiger Sanctuary. She definitely has a love for animals. <coughs> My wife and I loved to talk to her. She was an inspiration to us. I first met John around 1986. He loved to meditate. 
I would have many fascinating conversations with him and his wife. George Grosher. Hey George, happy birthday. George took the same digital class as my wife and I. He was a delight to be around. We also played the drums at the ashram. Mafu gave me a drum, but to be honest, I wasn't very good. George, thanks for being a good friend of mine. Monique. Monique was from Quebec. She spoke with this beautiful accent. I really liked her. She was so serene and honest. You could tell she was truly listening to you. To be honest, not too many people have that trait. The Foundation for Meditative Studies, Part 5 <coughs> Maya, Myra Trev Anyone who has a dolphin for a Facebook picture is a joy to be around. I haven't seen Myra in many moons, yet she will always be in my heart. She has a tremendous heart. Louise Ennis Luis has been involved in the movie and TV industry for many years. She is extremely creative. I have had many interesting conversations with her. Besides, she loves to meditate. Leslie Rose, Mitch Rose. Since I've been a surfer for many years, Leslie once asked if I ever heard about her son John. John was a famous surfer who dedicates his life in bringing clean water to disasters around the world. I love the Rose family. Her brother Mitch is an inspiration to me. Leslie is fun to be around. During my time in Ashland, I got to know her better. I used to see Mitch a lot at shopping cart. He was making his daily buy of produce, which was a lot. I will always remember my talks with him. William Pepper, Sergeant Pepper, known as Billy. I've known him since the mid 80s. When I moved to Ashland, I got to know him better. William has a great heart. I remember the time him and his wife invited my wife and I over for dinner. They were both great hosts. Billy is also an incredible drummer. Claudia Harrington, I first met Claudia in the 90s. She is another one who has a sparkle in her eyes. It seems like meditation is the doorway for the light to shine through the eyes. My wife and I always enjoy talking to Claudia. She had the sparkle of life surrounding her. Annalisa, Anna, Anasia. I first met Anasia in 1986. My wife and I would love to spend time with her. She always had something beautiful to, to say. Besides, she loved to meditate. Personally, I think meditation is the cornerstone of life. It is the direct link to our true existence. Rest in peace, Ishwar Devi. My dear friend Ishwar passed away a week ago. I was planning to write something a week ago. My body was feeling somewhat off, so I went to bed a few hours earlier than usual. I went into a deep sleep. Around 7 p.m., I heard this huge thunderbolt hitting the tree in my backyard. There was a huge explosion. Shrapnel from the tree was sent all over the backyard. My wife came into the bedroom and I couldn't come out of my deep sleep. I wake up early 
and was planning to write this for my dear friend Ishwar. Well, lo and behold, I couldn't turn on my computer. The power supply got damaged. Fortunately, my hard drive didn't get damaged. Anyway, here I am, a week later, writing this for Ishwar. My dear friend, Ishwar passed away last week. I knew her from the palace in the sky, a great ashram sitting on top of a mountain near Ashton, Oregon. We both had teachers from the Radha Samari lineage. We both loved to meditate. We were like kids eating our melting ice cream cones. People who love to meditate love being around each other. And quite frankly, we had nothing to say or prove. We were just like the sun in the sky. We just loved to shine. Both of us recognized that the divine in each other. The Shwara was a kind soul. To be honest, she was a gift from God. She was one of those who was like an angel. She really didn't belong <coughs> to this physical world with all its drama. Her mind was on God and helping her fellow man. I was amazed on how many people she knew. When she died, I saw hundreds of people who deeply loved her. I don't know how she died and what caused it. I know that I lost a dear friend, that deep in my heart she is there, smiling. Her ashes are scattered throughout the universe. Her soul has returned to God. Someday we shall meet again. other Oregon friends. I first met Mike in LA in the early 70s. Fast forward 30 years and he is living in Ashland, Oregon. Mike loves to meditate. Even in the 70s he loved to meditate. I remember walking on a path with my wife, wife and wife would, Mike would ride his electric bike. We would always stop and chat for a while. Cameron Gabriel. I used to work out with Cameron at the Y. Cameron is a great example of overcoming huge obstacles in his life. He has managed to hit a curveball out of the park. Cameron, you are an inspiration to me. Kevin Casey. Kevin is another one who worked out at the Y. He is owner of an Ayurvedic Herb Supply Center. They only use organic herbs. I will always remember the time we went surfing together. I had the time of my life. Mark Kellenbach. Mark was part of the men's group. My wife and I always enjoyed the Christmas parties that they had. It was a time to celebrate family and friends. I will always treasure those moments. Dana Baker. Dana is my daughter's Aliyah's friend. They met in ninth grade. We took her to the movie many times during high school. She is a delight to be around. Mystery School Friends Joni Jenkins I first met Joni around 2001. I love to read her Facebook posts. She loves to meditate. Her teacher is Yogananda, who passed away in the 50s. 
He was instrumental in bringing <coughs> the silence of yoga to the West. I have many fond memories of Joni and her son, Richard Leon. Richard didn't, definitely didn't come from this planet. His wisdom is way ahead of his time. He is completely humble <coughs> and has no signs of arrogance or ego surrounding him. My wife and I have spent much time with Richard. Felipe Haruko. For some reason, we call her Haruko by her last name. She was a student of Osho in the 90s. She loved the adventures and mystery of life. I loved her zest for life. She thought outside the box. Great heart. John Evans. John was another one who was practical at the same time his head was in heaven. Good traits. My wife and I spent much time with John. He was an inspiration to be around. Lori Secrets. What can I say about Lori? She's probably one of the great channelers I ever met. She can simply close her eyes and be in that state to receive wisdom and information. The course that took time and effort to achieve, Lori is an inspiration to me. One course I will always remember is called Gifts of the Spirit. It was a practical guided meditation into different dimensions. For the first time, I saw the inner worlds in a way I never saw before. It was a mixture of inner light and subtle realms of existence. Hana Bajor. Hana was another friend of Barbara's and I. She was also another great channel. She is from Ireland and had this incredible Irish accent. My wife loves spending time with her. Hana loves the adventure of life. Gundi Gunnitsen. One of my favorite experiences with Gundi was Raphael's temple. This was one of the only times where heaven was manifested into a room. The room felt like a meditation experience filled with light and love. Someday, the entire world will be in that state. Ruth, Ruthie. I love Ruthie and her parents. Ruthie had a zest for life. She made these incredible custom mandalas. She was a great artist, dancer, and loved to practice yoga. My wife and I loved to be in her presence. Karen Greenberg. Karen is the mother of Ruthie and Jeffrey. She was our Kabbalah teacher for a year. She has been teaching the Kabbalah since 2001. It gave me a brand new perspective on life. I kept a daily journal for a year of my journey in the trees of life. I have many great memories of Karen and her family. I am lucky to have met such a great person. Hey Karen, remember Cook and Tell Golden Brown? Grim. One funny story that Karen told me. Someone asked the group, who likes to meditate? Not a soul raises its hand. Karen said she yelled, Richard Fletcher does. I like that. Jeffrey Scott Besham. Hey Jeffrey, I will always remember the time you came to California with your mom. What a great time we had. So much laughter and kindness in the air. I'm glad to see your post on Facebook. You are a divine comic. Laura Legere. Laura was great friends with Julie Shirtile. We loved Laura's view on life. She loved adventure. Laura Neri died on an accident in Mexico about 10 years ago. She recovered and continued to embrace life with her determination and love. Great person to know. Karen Shea. Karen was from New York City. We met her around 2001. She loves to meditate. My wife and I would love to spend time talking to her. She was once a lawyer. Joseph Dominguez. Once upon a time, many moons ago, Joseph gave a very unique kind of seminar. We all sat in a circle holding hands and their room began to spin. 
My friend, Mike Mahan, a highly successful businessman, said that after this experience, he had a hard time finding his hotel room. Once he found it, he said he had a hard time opening the door. I will always remember the time I cooked Indian food for you and the gang in Penn Valley. I will always treasure that in my heart. Tom and Alani, as you know, I love the ocean. Here I am in a Utah attending a summer seminar. Tom and Alani have studied Lomi Lomi massage for many years. What an incredible experience. It brought me right back to Maui. It was a spiritual and physical experience. The way they cracked the sheets sounded like waves breaking in the distance. Words truly can't describe that experience. All I can say is, try it out.